Hey everybody, my name is Tim Owens. I'm the co-founder of Reclaim Hosting. And I'm Meredith Fierro, the team lead for Reclaim Hosting as well, support team lead. And today we're going to be talking about common troubleshooting tips for domains. Uh, as you're supporting your domains program, there's likely going to be lots of different questions on various things. Obviously the domains program, as with any type of web hosting situation, can have lots of different variables, lots of different scenarios, people running lots of different software, and that can be really scary at first. So uh, we like to uh, really talk about what are the things that you're gonna see the most and how do you fix those kind of things? So let's get right into it. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna talk about are just sort of some basic troubleshooting steps. These are like, can apply to almost any scenario. And there's a couple of things that we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about clearing your browser cache and what that actually means. We're gonna talk about, you know, trying a different browser or a network and attempting to recreate the issue. Uh, so those are sort of the three things that I wanna touch on. The first one, is clearing a browser cache. So caching can be a real issue here. And the problem is that browsers try to get really smart. They want things to go fast, especially things like Google Chrome. Uh, when you load a website, it's actually loading parts of it in the background on the actual browser. And so what happens is then your browser is trying to be really smart and next time you go to it, it wants to load stuff from its cache. And that can cause issues if someone says, well, I, I wrote a new post and something's not showing up right or they're editing HTML and they're saying, I'm still seeing the welcome screen on my homepage instead of the WordPress site I installed or whatever the case may be. Typically, the first thing we tell people is, have you tried clearing your browser cache? We've got a great website here. It's called Refresh Your Cache. And what I like about it is it gives uh, instructions on how to do it on all the various different browsers. And so this is a site we like to send people and say, hey, try clearing your browser cache first and see if the issue goes away. It can kind of be like a one size all fix for issues of that kind. The other issue with caching is maybe you want to try, you know, a different browser or a different network. So that can be another fix too. Maybe you've got a lot of stuff saved in Chrome, open up Safari or open up Firefox and say, is the same issue happening there? And then the other thing I tell people is try and recreate the issue yourself. So, you know, for example, if somebody says, when I log in, I get this screen, you should have options and we'll talk about them a little bit later about how you can, or um, I believe Lauren and Jim have talked about this, about how you switch to different users in WordPress. Try logging in as them and see if they have the same issue. So those are kind of the three basic troubleshooting steps. Um, another basic thing, that comes into play here is login and password management. So there can be a lot of logins that I found in, uh, in the domains program. So you've got a couple different ones here, and I think this is really important for people to understand the difference between all of them. The first one is how they're logging into the domains program as a whole. And hopefully you're one of the schools that has built in single sign-on. So when they're logging into their domain site, they're using their school credentials. That makes things very simple because you don't have to, as an administrator, worry about resetting passwords for people, knowing what their passwords are. You leave that all to the identity management folks at your school or your institution. So that can make it really simple. And for them, they use their password for everything from probably buying dinner at the dining hall to you know logging in and buying textbooks or signing up for classes. So that's an account that they know about and they can easily log into it. Um, but that's just for the main WordPress site. And that can confuse some folks because there's other credentials that are out there. One of them is they'll get emailed a set of cPanel credentials. And what the heck are those? So that is your primary cPanel account that you get when you sign up for an account. For users in a domains program, that typically takes the form of using SSH or SFTP. So if they're uploading files using an FTP program, that's when they're gonna have to use that account. It's gonna be completely different from their single sign-on account, and it's really just used for FTP, and they can reset it on their own within the cPanel system. And then the third set of credentials is when they go to install an application. Uh, for a lot of people, this is gonna be WordPress, but it could be Omeka, it could be Scalar. And when they go to install software, it's gonna say, create an admin account, and they'll have to set a username and password. If they're moving too quickly through that, it may just set some default credentials for them, and then they might try to log in with their single sign-on credentials or their cPanel ones, and then they'll get frustrated and go, why can't I log into my website? 
Um, luckily, in Installatron, uh, you may have noticed this, the WordPress installs that people do, it will sign them in automatically when they're going through cPanel. So that's one nice feature of Installatron, but that doesn't carry over to any of the other applications that are Installatron. So if you're installing Splots, if you're installing Scalar or Omeka, it's really important to know what account you set. And you can go in there and you can change it if you need to. So it's logins and password management are really tricky. We often recommend when you're doing any kind of workshops or training for people that you really hammer in how important it is. Uh, I always like to encourage people to use some kind of password management tool, whether that be one password or last pass, something for them to be able to save credentials so that this becomes less of a headache because it can be really frustrating. The next thing that I kind of want to take a step back on and talk about is just how you handle errors in the system. So somebody comes and they say, my website is broken. It's like, okay, well, in what way? So you go to load the site and sometimes different applications will show you errors, but they're very generic. So on the left here, I've got a very basic WordPress error. There's been a critical error. Thanks. <laughs> you know, I don't know what that means. Omeka says it's encountered in an error, but you really have no idea what's going on. So cPanel has some great tools in there that can kind of help you dive in and understand where those errors are and how to handle them. So the first place that you can check is actually, it's called errors. <laughs> it's under the metrics section in cPanel. And if you go to the errors page, it combines all the error logs from within a person's cPanel account and it shows them in reverse chronological order. So if an error is showing up on a website, you might get more information from this page. In a lot of cases we see with WordPress in particular, but sometimes with Omeka as well, that it might be a bad plugin or a theme that's causing errors. And if you look in this error log here, it will give you information about it. It'll tell you the path to the file that's throwing the problem. So this is a good place to kind of see like, okay, you've got a generic error, but is it being caused by a plugin or a theme or something like that? And then you can go and you can turn that plugin or theme off by just renaming the folder in the system. You'll also find that the files that this is pulling from, especially for PHP file, uh, errors, are going to be in a file called error underscore log. Now that's in your file manager. So if you go under the file manager and so for example, if someone's loading their main website and that's the one that's having a problem, that file would live in public underscore HTML here. And you can open up the file, you can download it and scroll back in time to see if the error, if somebody said the error was happening yesterday, you could download the file and maybe look back in the timestamps on it. Uh, so this is a way to go back in the file and get a sense of what's going on in there. And then of course, since you're in the file manager, if it is a plugin or theme, you could go into the plugins folder and you could just rename that plugin and that would disable it on the system and allow the website to load back online. So I think um, handling errors is really important because it's a way for you to get a better sense of what exactly is going on in the system, what's broken or what's not and things like that. And now I'll pass it off to Meredith. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so I'm just gonna go through some of the basic troubleshooting you might get from um, a student that's running into issues. And the first one um, happens when um, a student gets a blank cPanel. This can be just a white screen or a cPanel login um, box with the username and password. Um, the fix is pretty simple. Um, we just sync the password between WHMCS and um, WHM itself. Um, this is the um, cPanel and um, FTP password Tim re re referenced earlier. Um, so what you wanna do is um, take note of the user email or the name, um, log into WHMCS, and then on their product and services page, there is a little box for the um, password. Um, I've marked it out on mine um, now just for, for privacy reasons, but there's also these module commands and you can do a bunch with them, um, create an account, suspend, terminate, all that sort of stuff. But we wanna change the password to sync between WHMCS and WHM. Um, so just click that box, um, a little green box at the top will appear that, it, that the change has been um, fixed and then you can then switch back to the user and have them um, try logging in again. This usually works um, and they get logged right right in right away from there. Um, 
So, and then um, a lot of times we find that um, students um, and club members or that sort of thing have a project that they're working on or have a club website that they're that have multiple admins and so they need um, access to cPanel. And unfortunately, cPanel doesn't have a, a great way to um, have multiple users manage one cPanel at a time. Um, so we've kind of come up with a way to get around that within the user dashboard. Um, this involves um, creating a new order for each person within their WHMCS profile. Um, so this, this happens when the order exists on the server. So you'll want to make sure that each, um, each club member or um, project member have logged into the WordPress site, the main WordPress site to create an account. And then you'll go in and create an, a new order for the URL in, in question. So this happens on the summary page under product services, the little box there with the arrow. Um, then you'll want to fill out um, the desired URL um, under the domain section and make sure to select a product and service. Um, there's usually just one option like account or your project name account and that sort of thing. This, this gives the cPanel account the proper package when you're creating the order. Um, you also want to make sure to uncheck the boxes underneath order status. Um, we don't need to generate any invoices or anything like that since billing is only um, there's no billing involved within WHMCS. And then you'll click Submit Order there on the right. You'll get um, this Accept Order screen, this, this order page. Um, if the account exists on the server, you'll see I have in red here the, these two check boxes. You'll want to make sure to uncheck those because that, that will run into some errors when creating the order because the order already exists, the account already exists on the server. We don't want to recreate it. Um, so uncheck those boxes and then the green accept order button um, that will then put the order into an active status on the particular user and then they will have the record of it in their account. Then the student sees a drop down box on the bottom left of their dashboard, um, which they can use to then switch back and forth between the accounts. It'll refresh the page and then show them a new dashboard for the particular account. Um, so this is really handy if um, there's multiple, pro like a group project or anything like that, or if there's a, um, a club site that, want that someone wanted to create, it allows the, the account to be spread out over multiple people, and then that way there's no risk of um, an account getting accidentally terminated after the like, club president graduates or something like that. Um, it's maintained across the board. So... Um, the next one is changing a primary domain. We see this often all the time. Um, maybe a project name has changed, someone's changed their name, they just don't like the URL they chose at first. Um, we can change that easily within um, WHM and this happens in WHM CS as well. Um, so we start first in WHM. You'll wanna log in and click list accounts. Um, on the left sidebar, you can just search list, um, list there and click the button. Um, and then you'll want to search for the old domain first um, in the search bar. It's in the middle of the screen. Um, you'll want to click find, and then it'll bring up a list of the accounts, hopefully the um, particular one you're looking for. Um, to modify the account then to get the, the, do the new domain in the system, you'll want to click uh, the little tiny ch plus button next to the, do the domain name on the left. Um, it'll bring down some more options, and you'll click modify account. Then um, it'll bring up a list of like different settings about the package and the account itself. You'll only want to change the primary domain name box. That's really important because if you change the, the cPanel username or any other settings on the on that page, it could break the account. Um, so you'll only if you're changing the primary domain, you'll only want to change that first box where it says primary domain to the new domain. Meredith, are there <laughs> situations after a domain is changed where someone might have to go back and fix something or i mean does everything just automatically work or does that kind of depend on what they're yeah, running that's a great question um it depends on what you're running um so usually if it's just one wordpress install or like omeka install installed on the main domain like newdomain.com or meredithfiero.com the um, cpanel automatically changes everything over which is great mm -hmm. um, but if you're running subdomains 
um, through Installatron. So if you're doing like omeka.newdomain.com or uh, scalar.newdomain.com, this will actually have to be changed within Installatron. Um, they don't Just give- Updating you, URLs and stuff yeah, like that in exactly. there, yeah. Yeah, so you'll have to change those URLs. So that's something to keep in mind before you, you make the change. Um, just make sure to go through the My Apps and just check through just to make sure that there's not anything. Um, it is important to note that that doesn't apply to um, subdirectories. So newdomain.com slash WordPress or anything like that, that gets changed automatically. Great, um, cool. So yeah, so then on this basic information page, um, all the way down at the bottom, you'll want to click Save Changes. Um, it's not shown in the screenshot because it would be a very, very long screenshot for this, but all the way down at the bottom, click Save, um, and that'll run the, the change domain system. Um, so once that's done in w WHM, we're going to switch to WHMCS um, and go particularly to the product service page. Um, underneath the domain, um, you'll you'll paste in the new domain name and click save. Um, that way we just have a record um, in WHMCS of the change. And then that's it. All you gotta do is make the change um, from there. And then the new, um, the, pro the existing project will load on the new, new domain. Um, so most um, domain of one's own schools have subdomains. There's a few that do top level domains, um, but students can use their own domain within domain of one's own if they'd like. It can be registered anywhere with um, Google, um, GoDaddy, anything like that, Reclaim Hosting. Reclaim Hosting. <laughs> yeah, definitely Reclaim Hosting. Um, so within the Reclaim Hosting um, sphere, um, we have the two name servers. So um, if the student has their domain registered outside of Reclaim Hosting, you'll want to make sure that they update the name servers of the domain to the ns1.reclaimhosting.com and ns2.reclaimhosting.com. That will then point the domain to the proper server and the DNS will do all its, all its magic from there. Um, and so then I guess that would be a scenario then where they could go back and change the primary domain if they ask the administrator like, hey, I've got this domain, I signed up for the subdomain, but I really want to use this one. Exactly. Or they could just add it as a second domain in their account. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then finally, um, if you're troubleshooting with a student and you just aren't getting anywhere, you've exhausted all your troubleshooting efforts and you're just not sure where to go next, um, we're always here to help. So feel free to escalate a ticket or a question to us. Um, this is just a little list of what we'll need um, up front just so we can help you faster um, and get the, get the student up and running um, quickly as well. Um, so we'll just need the URL that they're working with, um, either just their username, first name, last name, um, email in the system, um, any screenshots of the errors they're reporting, um, and troubleshooting shooting steps that they that they have taken and you have taken, um, just in a little summary of the um, page itself. Um, and we just ask that you continue to work with the student directly and be the liaison between Reclaim Hosting and the student. Um, we try our best to help where we can, um, but having the student work um, in particular or work one-on-one -on -one with the student definitely um, does um, Take some time, and so we we just ask that the admins be the be the one the person that we are in contact with. Um, of course, unless you have an end user support agreement with us, then we'll work directly one on one with the student. That's right. We do offer end user support. Mm -hmm. Yes, people, and we do that for some as well. And so, yeah, I, and I think that's really important, right? Like, I, I think like support is like the elephant in the room for any administrator starting a domains mm -hmm. program. They're always like but what about support and what am I gonna do? And, and you know, if the budget is there and they can do end user support, that's great. If it's not, they're really afraid that all their time is gonna be sucked into this. And and I don't think it has to be something scary. You know, we're, we're here to Absolutely. help and we're here to, to help them. It's just, we can't scale to tens of thousands of their students and, and offer it for mm -hmm. everybody, you know, in that same way. And so, you know, and I think it's something that 
there's a comfort level. And once you get into it, you'll find that these common troubleshooting tips that we've mentioned are really some of the more often scenarios. And you'll always come across some. I mean, I feel, Meredith, you'll probably agree, like we're learning every day, like there's new oh, stuff absolutely. out there and something mm -hmm. comes up and you're like, well, I've never seen that one before. And, you know, Google and Stack Overflow and all that various stuff it, it is huge. There's cPanel forums. Omeka has their own forums, which I think are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, some of the applications out there don't have as much support, unfortunately. And so, but we do have good relationships with the developers. So Scalar is a good example where there's not a ton of documentation out there um, to help with, but at the same time, we have great experience working directly with the developers. And sometimes we'll pass those on directly to the end users and stuff like that. So I think it's not something to be afraid of. You know, it's some, this is a great sandbox for a lot of schools and places to play. And yeah, things are going to break, mm -hmm. but that doesn't have to be a scary thing that can, you know, be something to be celebrated, right? Mm -hmm. That's where the learning begins is when something breaks, for sure. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, I'm sure the Discord is quite active in there, and we're looking forward to talking with you.